In this video, we're going to look at Unit 2, Lesson 6, which is the side angle side triangle congruence. In Activity 6.1, we're going to be reading a proof about these two triangles. And as you're reading, you're going to use highlighters to color code when you hear the given information used in the proof. So the given information is just listed in your book, and it says that segment AB is congruent to segment DE, AC is congruent to DF, BC is congruent to EF. Then it lists the angles that are congruent, angle A congruent to D, B congruent to E, and C congruent to F. So words that you're looking for are like the words congruent or same length or measure. And then you want to highlight it on your picture and in this list. So let's do statement one together so that you can see what I'm talking about. So statement one says that segments A, B, and D, E are the same length, so they are congruent. So that's something that you would want to highlight and because it tells you that they're congruent. So what did it tell you was congruent was segment A, B is congruent to D, E, so highlighted in your list. And then also on your picture, highlight side D. A, B, and side D, E. So then you want to continue reading through this proof, and it's a lot to read through, but remember that you're looking for anything from this given that you're highlighting. So go ahead, read the next seven statements, and then come back to the video. All right, so number two just told you to apply the rigid motion. Since we know these segments are congruent, we know there's a rigid motion that takes one to the next. So when we do that, B will coincide with E, A will coincide with B. So then all that we have left to do is prove that C is going to land on F. So there was no congruency in number two. Number three just tells us that we can't be sure that C is on the same side as F. So if necessary, we're going to reflect it, which again, no congruency talked about there. Number four says we know the image of angle A is congruent to angle D. So angle A is congruent to angle D they just talked about in that one. So make sure that you highlight it in your list and on your diagram. Then number five just told us that when we do that, we will we'll know that C prime is going to be on this ray somewhere. So C prime, when we flip this over, so now C prime is going to land somewhere along here because it makes the same angle um, at A and D. Then it says, which is no congruency, six says segment DC prime is the image of AC. So when we flip this over, we know A is on D. So then D to C prime is the image of AC. And since rigid motions preserve distance, they have to have the same length. So then it says we know that AC will have the same length as DF. So AC will have the same length as DF. So there's another congruency that they said from the given. So this means since C and F are the same distance along the ray from D, they have to be in the same place. So that's telling us that we know C lands on F. So then we've shown A coincides with D, B coincides with E, and C coincides with F. So then we know that the two triangles are congruent. So after going through that whole proof, we can see that we only really used three pieces of information out of the six parts of the triangle. So when we're trying to prove triangles are congruent or even draw them, so when you're proving triangles are congruent or when you're making an exact copy of the triangle, you don't need every piece of information. Remember, every piece of information is six things, three sets of sides and three sets of angles. And really, we don't need all of that. We only need three things. Today, what we just saw is we actually only needed two sides and the angle in between those two sides congruent to the two sides and the angle in between in the other triangle. So that's what we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this lesson. And that's called side angle side when we see 
that we know two sets of sides are congruent and then the angle between those two sides is also congruent. So in activity 6.2 in your workbook, it tells you to draw a set of triangles. Um, and so I've drawn a set for you that matches what they're asking. So if you just wanna copy the two that are on your screen into your workbook, that would be good. Make sure you get the letters labeled correctly and all of these markings labeled correctly. Once you've drawn those two triangles, come back to the video. If you're doing this in class with me, then I have this um, proof, this fill in the blank proof for you to pick up. So make sure you do that. If you're just doing it online, then you will want to just write this down. You could get it in your workbook or get a separate sheet of paper. Um, but this is a fill in the blank proof to prove side angle side. So we see that we've got the two sets of sides and the angle in between here. So let's go ahead and fill in the blank. So side, I'm sorry, segments LM and PQ have the same length. So this means that they are congruent to each other. And we do this because once we know they're congruent, then there's a rigid motion that takes LM to PQ. So then we're gonna apply this motion to triangle LMN. And as we do that, L will coincide with P. And remember, our goal is to get all three vertices coinciding with each other. So we have L that coincides with P. And then we know that M will coincide with Q. So we've got two of the pairs of vertices matched up. So now the rest of our goal will be getting N to line up with R and saying how we know that. So we know that angle L is congruent to angle P. So really L prime is congruent to angle P because rigid motions don't change the size of the angles. Then we also know that that would mean that N prime, okay, and let me get a different color for this. So N prime, when we move this over here, is going to be somewhere along this ray, right? Because the, that angle stays the same size. So um, N prime must be on ray PR. Oops, let me get a better color here. Must be on ray PR since N prime and R make the same angle with P. Now we know that N prime will actually need to coincide with R. Okay, it'll actually need to land on R um, because N is the same distance from P as it is from N. Okay, so it's the same distance from P as N is. So that means it'll land right on top of R. Therefore, we've shown um, that we'll take L onto P and M onto Q and N, or sorry, um, yep, and then N on to R. Therefore, what we've shown is that triangle L, M, N, so I'm just taking those letters, L, M, N, is congruent to triangle P, Q, R, the ones that those letters coincided with. So now for activity um, 6.3, we're going to go through a story here first. So this isn't in your workbook, but listen to what Kieran and Mai are trying to do because it's going to help us out with the next activity. So Kieran says, I'm stumped on this proof. And Mai said, well, what are you trying to prove? Well, I'm trying to prove that in an isosceles triangle, the two base angles are congruent to each other. So in this case, I'm trying to prove that angle A and angle B are congruent. Hmm, let's think of some, some geometry ideas that we already know. Well, we know if two pairs of corresponding sides and the corresponding angles between the sides are congruent, then the triangles have to be congruent. And this is what you just proved, right, with side angle side. So if we have two sets of sides and the angle between them congruent, then we've got congruent triangles. So Mai says, yep, we also know that we can use reflections, rotations, and translations to prove triangle congruence or to prove congruence and symmetry. The isosceles triangle you've drawn makes me think of symmetry. 
if you draw a line down the middle of it, I wonder if that could help. Wait, when you draw that line, it breaks the triangle into two smaller triangles. I wonder if we could use that to prove that those triangles are congruent using side angle side triangle congruence. It's an isosceles triangle, so we know that one pair of corresponding sides are congruent. So you definitely know that those two sides are congruent since it's um, isosceles. And Kieran says, and this segment here in the middle um, is part of both triangles. So it has to be the same length in both. Look. So that dotted line is in both triangles. So it must be congruent here as it is here since it's the same segment. So we have two pairs of corresponding sides that are congruent. So how do we know that the angle between them is congruent? So how do we know that this angle is congruent? And Kieran says, I'm not sure. Maybe it has something to do with um, how we drew that line of symmetry. So that's what we're going to be working on here. And what they ended up drawing in was an auxiliary line. And an auxiliary line is just an extra line that's drawn into a figure to reveal just like a hidden structure, a hidden triangle or some other things. And so, for example, a line shown in the isosceles triangle is a line of symmetry. Um, and the lines shown in the parallelogram are the heights. So we can, you know, draw it from here straight down to get perpendicular angles down here. So that's the one thing we know. Um, and same here, you could draw it to get perpendicular angles here. You can also draw in, like we could just draw in an angle bisector. So then that would make these two angles congruent. We wouldn't know anything else down here. Um, you could draw this to be the bisector of the segment. So drawing it to the middle here, and then that would be the only thing you know. But so you can kind of draw auxiliary lines in with one specific piece of information about them. So let's use that in... 6.3 to finish off helping Mai and Kieran proving the isosceles triangle base angle theorem. So we're going to finish the proof that they started. So draw in that auxiliary line and define it so that you can use side angle side. So remember what we knew. We knew these two sides were congruent. We also knew this segment was in both. So what we need to do is define it so that we know that these two angles are congruent. So that means that we're going to draw it as an angle bisector. So you've got some fill in the blank stuff in your book. I've added a couple extra things to help you. So the bolded stuff is extra stuff that I've added. So go ahead and see if you can fill in the blank now um, to finish off this proof. Pause the video. Come back. All right, so we're going to draw this line in as the angle bisector of this top angle, right? So we're going to do draw the angle bisector of angle B, P, A, so that angle up top. We know that segment P, A is congruent to segment P, B because of the definition of an isosceles triangle. So we knew those two sides were congruent. Now we also know that these two angles are congruent, right? So we're going to call this letter down here Q. Um, but so BPQ is congruent to angle APQ. And that's because we defined line PQ as the angle bisector of angle BPA, right? Of angle BPA here. Then we also know that segment PQ is congruent to itself. So this one in the middle is congruent to itself. And therefore, now we see that these two triangles are congruent by side angle side because now we have, if we take a look here at each of these triangles, right, we have these sides congruent, we have these sides congruent, and we have the angle between them. Once we see this, that means that the two triangles have to be congruent. So then once we know the triangles are congruent, Okay, this means that their corresponding parts are congruent. So this angle would be congruent to this one. So angle A is congruent to angle B because they are corresponding parts of the congruent triangles once you prove the triangles are congruent. So then that proves our base angle theorem 
um, which means every time you have an isosceles triangle, those two base angles between the sides that are congruent to each other or across from them are going to be congruent. So why did Kieran and Mai use an angle bisector here? So why did they make this an angle bisector? And remember, that's because they knew that these sides were congruent. And you know that a segment that's in both triangles is going to be congruent to itself. And the triangle congruence theorem that they know is side angle side. So they need to know the angle between the sides is congruent as well. So they needed this angle to be congruent to use side angle side theorem. So could they have defined the auxiliary line differently? They certainly could have. It just wouldn't have helped them with their other information. So if they defined this as being perpendicular, that doesn't get them side angle side because that didn't get them the angle in between here. So they could have done that. Um, they also could have defined Q right here as the midpoint. So then they could have gotten these as congruent. But again, that didn't get them back to side angle side, which is the theorem that they know works. So they needed to define it as an angle bisector. So you've looked at two theorems in today's lesson so far. So make sure you get these written on your reference chart. So we know if we ever see two sets of sides and the angle between being congruent to any other triangle that the two triangles are congruent. And we've also proven that anytime we have an isosceles triangle, you can get base angles that are congruent or you will have base angles congruent. So make sure you pause the video and get this written down. All right, then to close off the lesson, so what auxiliary line would we add to this diagram to help us use side angle side congruence theorem to prove that the diagonals form 45 degree angles with the sides. So in a square, we know all of the sides are congruent to each other and we know all the angles are 90. Well, if we need to define something about or prove something about diagonals, we probably need a diagonal in. So drawing in one of the diagonals would be a good auxiliary line, right? because then you also know this angle is 90 and so is this one. So then this would prove by side angle side that these two triangles are congruent, which then would prove that this angle and this angle are equal to each other. And if F started as 90 degrees and now it's two equal pieces, that would get you down to 45. And then in this second one, it says, what auxiliary line would we add to the diagram to use side angle side theorem to prove that in a quadrilateral that has opposite sides congruent and one pair of angles congruent, that the opposite sides are parallel to each other. So if you need side angle side, you're going to have to connect B to C here because then we see... Um, the two sides and the angle between, two sides and the angle between. So now we know that these two triangles are congruent. And then when we prove that lines are parallel, that happens by having alternate interior angles congruent. So when we have something like this with that angle and then this angle, right? So that rotated down angle. So now we would see that the alternate interior angles are congruent because those two triangles are congruent and that proves that the sides are parallel to each other and that's shorthand for parallel. All right, then you can underline this stuff in your summary. And then hopefully after watching this video, you can explain why side angle side triangle congruence theorem works um, and you can use it in a proof. And then you can check your understanding by doing the practice problems for lesson six in your workbook. And you can also work on this cool down. So if you have questions on the cool down or you're confused, um, make sure you reach out to your teacher for some support.